Hello world, I'm Brancliff. I've gotten some more Elsword news, but like, does anyone else feel like this is going a little too fast? Like, maybe it could slow down on this a little bit? I guess it is summer, and there is always big summer and winter updates, so eh, maybe I should be prepared for it. And hey, this is a good time for me to be farming views. So let's talk about the synergy system and the legs and feet model. Oh, okay, let's just get that out of the way. They're changing the way the feet look, so like, this is how they look now. I'm gonna be honest, I kind of prefer when Elsword gave everybody like elephant legs because then it didn't make me think about how they had feet. Feet are gross. Like, <laughs> I, I like the explanation in the comments. Bro, why are feet their main concern? Because KOG has a foot fetish apparently. I've been telling you all this for so long. And yes, that is actually me. I don't really comment on Babel very often, but that's one of those times. Anyways. We got that out of the way, let's talk about the thing that's like actually important here, alright? The synergy system. Place registered characters in collection to gain various synergy effects. You need to place multiple characters with same synergy to gain synergy effect. Uh, I've got some choice words to say about that later on. Uh, right click on the character portrait in the character list to place them in the synergy slot. Two synergy slots are given by default, you can spend ED to expand the slots up to four. It, it actually means you can buy four more slots up to six, more on that later. Uh, you can purchase synergy effect- oh, oh by the way, it's only- I, I think it's only five mil to buy each of the synergy slots, so it's not a big deal. You can purchase synergy effect ticket from Ariel to use the effects. Synergy effect is applied in certain dungeons and PvP. It's not applied in Arid Island. Modified values are used in PvP. I'm scared of what they mean by certain dungeons. Like, what if they just pull the plug on this system for a certain dungeon later on? Like, you need the stats in order to clear this dungeon well, and then they're like, ah, just kidding, you don't get the stats anymore. Amount of synergy you can have increases depending on your collection status. <sighs> Cool. Uh, note, class changing will update the synergy effect accordingly. Synergy content can be used per character, so you can have different synergies on each character if you're willing to pay up. See, it says you can purchase the synergy effect ticket from Ariel to use the effects. Here's the thing they don't tell you on this page. It is 30 mil per character per week. Yeah, all right, we'll, we'll talk about what I feel about that later on. Now, I wasn't going to do a video on this originally, but thanks to the really fast work of the translation team and the Elwiki staff, which by the way, seriously, thanks guys, y'all don't get enough credit. It's only been a day and they've already listed out all the synergy effects, so let's go over some of them, right? So for this cast of characters, Daybreaker, Code Ultimate, Flame Lord, Innocent, Tempest Burster, and Eternity Winner, if you have three of those characters, you get plus 3% polarized, but if you have all six, and that's proof that there is uh, six synergy slots, uh, you can have plus 5% polarize. There is 2% all skill cooldown decrease, 4% all skill cooldown decrease. Uh, if you have the Reinas, you get HP, you get 80,000 HP in dungeons, 32,000 HP in PvP. If you have any of these characters, 2 for plus 1% physical attack, 4 for plus 3% physical attack. If you have any of these characters, 2 for plus 1% magical attack four for plus three percent magical attack for some reason all of the auras get their own synergies and i find this dumb for so many reasons like maybe they're trying to apologize for making all the auras have bad collection stats but the entire meaning of the word synergy is that it involves multiple things so giving a solo synergy that is missing the point also, it's they're, they're not even that good still. I mean, 8% item drop rate increase, that is worth 4 points of resonance. I know, I know, it all adds up, so people are probably gonna have to do it anyway. And yet again, I'm a little annoyed that the Shakti one is just better than the other ones. Like, everybody's going to want that resonance farming at some point. Ugh. If you have any of these characters, you get all speeds increased. If you have any of these characters, you get physical and magical defense, yay. By the way, real quick, I want to give shoutouts to uh, one of my common commenters, um, Elsword Eve Code Cute, I think I might have gotten the order of those words wrong. I mentioned how the aura collection bonuses suck, and she did some testing on how much physical and magical defense actually matter. Uh, I, I really like uh, 
just like testing it elsewhere not not as in like i like doing it but i like seeing other people do it because i feel there aren't enough people in the elsword community doing all the like elsword science just testing things because honestly sometimes you just assume things work in this game and then like three years later they'll be like oh like we fixed this problem uh, if you have two of these three characters, plus 2% damage to enemies with less than 50% HP, wow, that is, that is a really weak buff, 2% uh, ignore defense if you get these characters. And this is where things get a little weird. Uh, this is plus uh, X% percent damage to enemies with more than 50% HP. And this additional title count not overlapped with Guardian of Secret Close Space. Mary, if you're watching this, all that work you did, I am so sorry. <laughs> Yeah, this doesn't overlap with the same title, but once you have all of these characters, it's like, well, now I don't have to get the 300 L rewards on every character. I can just rent out this buff to whoever I want. Having the lose gives you adaptation, which by the way, this is actually so important because now we are finally, after like three years, finally at a point where these demons are slightly resistant to the Demon Realm debuff. I don't know why it took so long to integrate the storyline and the gameplay in some way, but hey, they did it! Yay! It only took them this long. Good job. These characters give you max 8 MP. These characters give Elsword, Raven, and Elises a double jump. Only those characters specifically. No one else. Although, to their credit, those characters don't really get any mobility anything like reyna gets double jumps and slide kicks cl has trampoline and slide kicks chung's got the cannon jump elsword raven and elisus get nothing i'm gonna be honest this this buff is probably more fun than it is actually useful but there's gonna be someone in pvp who does some like really weird fancy combo thing going on with it well i don't know if you're watching this do you have any of these characters or, or do you only play labby anyways Consume two L's essence for increased hyperactive skill damage. This is like if you really, really care about spending more money to make your dungeons go by faster. I kind of like this one because it's like, well, they finally did something again for hyperactives considering that Mester skills are kind of just like boneless hyperactives anyway. This is elemental resistance. I'm not going to do the math on this one considering how much I butchered that in the last one. This is really dumb. First path, all character, all skill damage. So if you have these characters, all of your skill damage increase goes up for all characters of that path. And if you have six of them, you get Wonder Wall when you use a force skill. For second jobs, you get Sun Shower, and for third jobs, you get Space Distortion. Third jobs, third path, whatever, you know what I mean. And because Prime Operator is technically the only fourth path in the game, she got her own thing and it's just her and you only need her and it only works on her <laughs> this is so cute but like so stupid but so cute there is like one person out there who actually cares about this everyone else is just like why but that that one prime operator is probably just so happy right now they're just like oh, koj cares about me Prime Chibi, I don't know if you're watching this, but do you still play? Anyways, um, having these characters gives you item recovery increase and the revive effect. So now you don't need a title for it, you just kind of have it. Uh, Nisha gives you master artifact experience increase, <laughs> and this is so dumb. Sariel and Minerva gives you aerial all skill damage, which could be cool, but most characters only have one or two skills they can use in the air at all. And in fact, even with Sariel, she only has a few of them. Like, you have to already be the Minerva player to really care about this. <sighs> Alright, so what do I think about this? Um, let's go back to the original post on this. When they announced the L Search Party Collection system, they said that they were going to add more features to it, so we had to have seen this coming in some way. I didn't think that it was going to be this. I don't think anybody could have seen this coming, but well, that's okay. Uh, it's really unique, but it's its payment system is weird because you rent the skills. It's 30 mil per character per week. And let's talk about that real quick. In the last, no, no, like, oh God, when, when the L Search Party collection system was announced, I was like, you know, what if they're making this 
be expensive as a means of fighting the botting problem they don't know how to fix. Like, it was a joke. Like, I didn't actually mean that. And then they started doing that. And it's like, I feel bad. I feel like it's my fault. <laughs> and, you know, on the whole, like, ED thing, right? I I've been talking about this for a while. Because I said in the last video, like, oh, you need 2.4 billion ED to do all of this. So, um, I also didn't consider that it cost 50 mil to buy the character slot. I don't know how many character slots you get when you make a new account. I think it's seven don't quite remember if it's seven then the remaining uh character slots 37 of them although technically it goes up to 43 but you don't need 43 you only need 40 if you're really gonna go for this at all that's still like 1.6 billion ed so that's a lot of money you have to bleed out this is getting really really expensive and now na's economy is like really inflated but i still don't know how economies from other servers are going to react the Europe economy is very not inflated, which means that money is on a much smaller scale there. ED in of itself is more valuable with less of it compared to having the same amount of ED on another server, but that also means I don't know how they're supposed to pay for this. Going back to the synergy buffs though, like I said, the idea of uh, classes having a synergy buff with just themselves is stupid because the entire meaning of the word synergy involves multiple things. Although I will give them props for the prime operator thing, that is really cute. But th the thing that I mostly don't really like about this system is it's really hard to memorize because they don't always do a very good job of matching the effects that you get from synergy relative to the classes that you know, have it. For example, right, the first job bonus, right, for all characters of the first path, that is all of these characters of the first path, all 13 of them. However, if you scroll back up to the uh, bonus for physical attack and magical attack, that's only five classes for physical and magical attack, even though there's like 20 of each, I'm not gonna do the math on that, it's probably roughly 50-50. So it, it seems kind of weird because it's not going to be easy to memorize which classes give which things and you're probably going to have to cross reference this a lot which means you're probably going to have to do a lot of alt tabbing and that's going to be a lot of a hassle. I do wish that they could have expanded the scope of these things to be more inclusive of all characters that would benefit from that but even then that's only applicable for some of them. Like, if I had to match uh, plus item drop rate to a class, I don't know which character I would give it to, but I still don't like that it just goes to Apsara herself, which, by the way, how do you pronounce that? I mean, I don't really care, but I guess I probably should pronounce it correctly, considering that I'm, I, I care so much about people pronouncing Japanese things correctly, like anime. Not all of these buffs are good. I, I, I am still annoyed that like some of these, like the, the polarized one, I have no idea what the relationship is between these classes and polarized. The entire point of polarized is like glass cannon gameplay, right? Wouldn't that only apply to Innocent and Tempest Burst or anything? I, I don't know. I don't know why Daybreaker is here. She's like very not about that. Um, I do like the creativity for some of these things though, like giving additional title counts. I really like that because I don't want to have to go for Guardian of Secret Close Space on multiple characters. I only got halfway through it on my Odd Sorcerer before I stopped playing. I like that adaptation means that the Lucille's are finally a little uh, resistant to the Demon Realm debuff compared to just ordinary humans. It seriously should not have taken this long. But I really like the creative uh, buffs, even if some of them are garbage, like Elsa Raven and Elsa is getting a double drop. I seriously don't know how they're going to make use of that. It is still really interesting because these characters not having double jumps originally means that when you use a double jump with them, they're still going to have the same attacks that they would in the single jump. Like, if you double jump and press Z as Reyna, you'll do the stomp. But uh, this would be like if you double jumps with Reyna and press Z and you just did the forward kick. So um, this could make for some really interesting mix-ups, maybe? But that's hypothetically speaking. <laughs> the L's Essence one, that, that's a bit strange. And now keep in mind, right, like you only get six slots to work with. So using five slots on a buff, that kind of sucks. Mm, I don't know. You have to balance out both 
how good something is and how many slots it takes. So it's gonna take a little bit of creative thinking, which I'm a fan of, but I wish that KOG themselves used more creative thinking when it came to matching buffs to the classes that grant those buffs. <laughs> and it's weird too, because like, you might be thinking, oh, well, maybe they just didn't want to use certain classes more than once, but they definitely did use certain classes more than once. I mean, like, right here, if you just take a look at it, Furious Blade is right here in the first path and right here in the double jumps. A, a warning about these, like, oh, you use a force skill and you get a skill thing. At the very bottom of the page, it does warn you that uh, it, it's a bit of a crappier version of the skill that you get. Like, Wonder Wall only provides super armor and not red damage and it only lasts for 7 seconds instead of 10. Actually, I don't know if that's a nerf, I think that's more like a sideways sort of thing. Space Distortion's orb does not move and only pulses once. I don't know what makes the Sun Shower worse. In all honesty, I'd probably go for the Sun Shower. I, I, I love Sun Shower, man. Um, <laughs> although I seriously can't get over how stupid of a buff this is. All skill damage, but only for a certain path, which by the way, um, I don't know if that's going to count for your combat power or not, because generally speaking, conditional buffs don't apply to your combat power because they're only active some of the time, but I don't know if how it'll work is like, it'll give you a buff, and then the buff says, oh, it only works if they're this path, or if it'll check, like, I, I don't know how to describe it on a programming level, so we're just gonna have to wait and see, is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> I do wish that Prime Operator would have gotten a activates a skill when you use a force skill sort of thing. I, I mean, I can see why they didn't, and in all honesty, in terms of frame rates, it's probably better that they not do that. But yeah, that's a thing. Having the revive effect. <laughs> I will say in PvP, this might not be as gross as it sounds because we don't know how much HP you'll revive with which means that maybe you could just like poke them off with like an aiming shot or something to finish them off. I'm not sure. Aerial all skill damage is seriously one of the dumbest things on this entire thing though. So uh, overall, that's what I- Oh! Got one last thing that I wanted to talk about in this, right? Um, this was something that was talked about in the official Elsewhere Discord. I am not that big of a user of the official Elsewhere Discord. I prefer the user Discord, but someone brought this up and I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to pose this question to you guys before I close the video. So, like I said, you have to rent out these skills. It is 30 uh, mil for a week per character. Now, on one hand, it's kind of annoying because if you buy the, you know, if you buy the buffs for a week, right, then you're gonna feel like you have to play. And that means, like, if you don't play, it's like, oh, I wasted that money. I didn't get enough of a usage of that money. And on one hand, that is like stressful and annoying, but on the other hand, it does increase player activity. So I see why it is the way it is. But someone posed the question of what if rather than having to rent out the buffs, what if they just let you buy them in the item mall? And I, I like, what if they just made it so like instead of having to pay 30 mil for a week, you just paid six dollars or something? And I actually really like that idea because I would rather only have to pay for it once and then never have to worry about it again. Of course, some people are like, oh, well, other people shouldn't get to do that because I'm a communist and I think everybody should just get everything for free all the time. But, uh, like, do you guys, would you guys rather have just pay for it once and then just be done with it? Because, um, in that case, this, like, the peace of mind, I think, would be worth it. You would have to consider the exchange rates of Kaching to ED and how much, uh, how many weeks of this would you need to pay for in order for it to have been worth it, but just a question that I'd ask. I would do a card pull on the top right, but apparently they're getting rid of those, so... Mm, mm. I, I, they said like only 1% of channels actually used it that year, and yeah, yeah, I understand. Cool, alright, that's it for me. I'm Brandcliffe. Goodbye, everyone.